Well, hi, everybody. I'm here with uh, two recent CCU grads, with Matthew Hodgins and uh, Emily Simonitis, and they are both in Italy, uh, and they've been involved with uh, Samaritan's Purse in the response to the coronavirus. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank Thanks for having us. And tell, tell us what time is it where you are, because it's um, the middle of the day here. It's 8.40 at night. We've just finished our day shift, and now the night shift has come on, uh, which is mainly doctors who are here um, treating patients. Okay. And where exactly are you? Describe, you know, not only the city, but the actual place you're, you're in right now. Um, we are in Cremona, Italy, just outside of Milan. And we are, right now we're sitting in a hospital, a field hospital, in a parking lot outside of the actual hospital here in Cremona. Um, so we're in a tent in a parking lot. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's great. And how, how is Samaritan's Purse responding to the coronavirus in, in Northern Italy? Italy's been in the news a lot. Yeah. Yeah, especially a few weeks ago, Italy was kind of all over the headlines, and now the United States has been starting to be hit even more. Um, but Samaritan's Purse responded starting on March 17th. They sent over a uh, emergency field hospital that was specifically decked out as a respiratory care unit, and it's got 68 beds. Um, 12 of those are ICU beds that are equipped with ventilators, and the rest of those are for just regular patients. Um, all of the patients that we're seeing are COVID positive. Um, they have tried to really simplify the work that we're doing, so uh, we don't do any sort of triage. We've partnered with a hospital here in the area that's why we're in their parking lot. And they do all the triage. They positively test their patients and then they send uh, them over to us when they're ready for us to help assist them. Mm. And why did, there, there are a lot of locations that Samaritan's Purse could have gone to. I know they've set up tents in Central Park in New York City. Why did, why did they choose uh, Northern Italy? Yeah, so um, at the time that we deployed, Italy was the epicenter of, of this disease. Um, there have been over 20,000 deaths um, so far, which is only surpassed by the U.S. now. Um, and so it just, it made sense. Um, we also, we never go anywhere without being invited or um, without permission by the government. And the government allowed us to come in um, and support them in this way. And so we're very honored to be here. Mm. The, the Italian government actually reached out to us, specifically the Lombardy region, which has seen over two thirds of the deaths that for Italy, which is up in northern Italy. Um, and so we asked them where we could be of greatest assistance, and they wanted us to specifically partner with this hospital, Cremona Hospital, and that's why we're here. Mm. And, and for the two of you, why, why did you choose to go to Italy? Were you on another assignment with Samaritan's Purse, or how, how did you end up there? Yeah, so both of us actually had other assignments that we were going to be doing. Um, I was preparing to go to South Sudan um, for the next three months to a year, and that could still be happening. But as as a country started to close their borders, um, those assignments were kind of temporarily postponed. And really the focus sure. for our ministry for Samaritan's Purse is on our response here in Italy and New York. So many of us in our program are here. There's a, there's a handful of us. Um, and then there's also a few that are responding in New York. Hmm. Yeah, and you just graduated in, in May, right? This past May. So did you yeah. ever think <laughs> that you'd be doing Not, what you're doing right now? Not at all. This is a huge surprise. Um, like Matt said, we, were, we didn't even know um, what our jobs would look like at this point, let alone that we would be here in Italy. Um, so mm -hmm. it's been crazy, but we are so grateful for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about what you each of you are doing right now, what, what your work involves? Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> um, so when I got the call to come, they wanted me to work with procurement, um, which is basically going out and interacting with vendors, um, going to stores and getting buying all the, the items that are needed for the hospital um, and just for the operational staff to, can, to continue helping with the running of it. Um, we don't purchase any of like the, the medical supplies themselves that goes through the pharmacy here. Um, but my typical day, I go out to um, grocery stores, to hardware stores, um, and I'm interacting with uh, Italian store owners, with vendors, um, and getting the items that we need. 
Also, the first day that I was here, I was asked to be the fleet manager and I had no experience driving stick shift and that's what a lot of our vehicles are. So I've learned how to drive stick shift on the streets of Italy. And then I'm also in charge of the laundry here. So any of the scrubs and of the linens that are used in the hospital. So mainly working in an operational role, uh, just supporting the medical staff in any way I can. Hmm. And then my role um, is also primarily operational. I am working in uh, medical logistics, so um, obtaining supplies and um, all of our PPE, anything that the nurses and doctors use throughout the day. Um, I work on storing it, um, procuring it, as well as um, stocking the hospital so that they are ready to go at all times, um, day or night. Mm. I, was, uh, I was speaking with my, my sister this weekend, and she quoted one of the Psalms that I think David had written about how it's better to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord mm-hmm. than something else. Yeah. And that really resonated with me because sometimes I'll spend like hours folding laundry, counting scrubs, making sure that they have what they need. And it doesn't always feel like, uh, you know, the, the glorious work necessarily. Mm. Um, but truly I'm, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be a part of the work that we're doing. Um, and so even if that is as a doorkeeper, as the folder of laundry, uh, it's, it's just really cool to be, be a part of this and to see wow. how God is moving. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is an important role. And uh, I think that's Psalm 84, you know, yeah. and, uh, it's about the, the temple. How lovely are your dwelling places? And somebody's saying, uh, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than a dweller in the tents of the ungodly. So yeah, right. but a very important supportive role in this whole thing. Uh, um, tell us a little bit, you, you've been on, you know, what many of us would consider to be the front lines of the coronavirus. Uh, what have you seen that you, you just didn't know before you left about this whole thing? Yeah, I guess I would say I didn't realize the full extent of how bad it could be. Um, I remember one of the first days we opened, we had um, reporters here and I don't even think um, some of the Italians realized how bad it was here Mm. Um, and so we had some reporters on the front lines with us and as a patient was being brought into the ICU um, he was intubated and on a on a ventilator Um, the reporter just dropped to his knees and in tears and so Mm. I think just the full um, depth of how bad it actually is or can get um, has really been huge Um, yeah yeah. When, uh, when I was back in the States, I didn't know any friends or family or neighbors who had actually, uh, you know, become sick with COVID. And since being here, because especially this region has been so hard, hard hit, um, it's hard to come across someone who doesn't have a family member or a friend or a neighbor or someone who they go to church with who's died from it. And so they take it very seriously. The whole country has been on national lockdown since uh, March 3rd. And it was originally supposed to end the lockdown today, and they extended it to May 3rd. And so w- when I go out to, to go to the store, uh, there are no cars on, on the streets. There's very few people who are walking around. Um, there's very strict parameters on who's allowed to leave their home. Everyone has to be wearing a mask. So it's, it's very surreal driving through the streets of Italy. Um, you don't see any children. Uh, most, most homes, they have to nominate one family member who's allowed to leave. And that's not the children. So in all in the three weeks that we've been here, I've probably seen only a handful of children. Um, and yeah, it's when even going to the store, um, only essential items are allowed to be purchased. And so whole rows are, are closed off. Most stores are closed. There's only a few essential stores that are open. Um, mm. And so, yeah, it's just been pretty crazy to see, um, I guess, just how how much this can really affect a community, uh, a nation. Um, because at the time when I was in the States, I hadn't really seen um, how how deadly it could be. Mm-hmm. Most of us, uh, you know, this is all, this is new for everybody. Uh, but since you're on, as it were, the front lines of the pi- pandemic, can you, can you uh, walk us through uh, your day? Like what, so you've mentioned a little bit of what, what you do, but what's, what's a typical day like for you and, and the hours that you're having to 
Yeah. Um, so we uh, get up in the morning and we go, we all go to breakfast and we have devotions together um, and just pray together to start the day. And then we all come over to the hospital together um, and we each go off and do our own thing. So I start the day by um, stocking all the racks, making up for all the supplies that they've taken over the night shift. Um, restock the PPE so that as soon as the nurses are in scrubs, they're ready to go in. Um, mm -hmm. And then I help out in any area needed until um, lunch and dinner when we restock again. Um, some days it's 12 hours, some days it's 17 hours. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's, yeah, it's been very intense, but um, mm -hmm. so worth it. Yeah, our, our team here is working on a 24 hour schedule. Um, so for the medical staff, there's a day shift and a night shift, both work 12 hour shifts. Um, typically the, the operational support, which is what Emily and I are doing, we're here during the day. Um, sometimes Emily does come and spend the night here um, and that makes her days 18 to 20 hours long. Mm -hmm. um, even on Easter, you know, our whole team was here. So that, that, that's been one of the challenges. Um, typically our, our day is about 12 hours um of, of working and um the the days off are pretty hard to come by typically it's a morning off here and afternoon off there um so i think that's been one of the hardest things just to kind of sustain that pace um and to i guess just remember you know why we're here it, it, i think it can be so easy to just get caught up in the work and the doing um when mm. you're on that yeah. that hectic schedule um but ultimately samaritan's purse is not just here to be uh, treating patients physically they are here to be um, you know addressing the spiritual needs and we have we have chaplains who are in with the patients um, we have chaplains who are out here um, like ministering to translators and military officials who are working with us and that's been one of the coolest things is seeing some of our patients accept Christ see some of our translators accept Christ yeah, and just wow. hearing, hearing reports from um, hospital staff who we've partnered with um, from just people out in the community about what a light we are here. Um, Italy is a Catholic country, um, but for in, in Catholicism, there's such a separation um, between God. It, there's not always that personal relationship. It goes through a priest. And so for, for our food staff who are around us and they see the way we pray, um, for those who just watch the way that we interact with each other, they're seeing just a, a, a representation of what personal relationship with the Lord looks like. And I've just been amazed at how receptive so many of the Italian people are, the patients, mm -hmm. and how it just seems like the Lord has uniquely softened their hearts and prepared them for, for the message that we've come to bring. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's um, just to, to be right there, uh, to be every day offering yourself to say, Lord, use me in whatever way is a, it's, you never know where, where it's going to go, but uh, but he will open up some amazing opportunities. I'm joined with uh, our vice president of student life, Jim McCormick, and I believe you know Jim very well. In fact, he's the one who said, hey, we have two recent grads who are on the front lines in Italy, and wouldn't it be wonderful if we'd connect with them? Jim, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And guys, we are uh, just so proud of you over there. Um, and uh, just uh, our hearts go out to you and the work that you're doing. And I think, you know, right off the bat, as I hear what's happening over there in your lives and the hours you're putting in and what's at stake, obviously, uh, what sustains you during this time? What, what has sustained you during this time as you keep getting up in the morning with another 12 hour day ahead? Um, what, what are the things that have sustained you and, and, you know, provide you the energy to do your work? Mm -hmm. Um, I think, as Matthew kind of said, um, just remembering why we came to begin with, um, how important the gospel is. It's not um, a day-by-day -day thing. It's an eternal thing, and it has eternal weight and eternal purpose. Um, and I think we, like, we're all in this together. There's 70-plus um, staff sometimes, and um, we really are it's been incredible to see people actually acting as the hands and feet of Christ. And I think I see that in each staff member here. And so I think we really do draw off each other, off of um, each other's faith. Um, the Bible calls us to that, to build one another up in faith. And I think that's really what is happening here. Um, we've also seen some incredible things happen. 
Um, we've had, there have been deaths, there have been sad things, but we've also seen incredible miracles as far as people um, healing and coming off of ventilators and being discharged. And so that makes it all worth it at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Italian people love their espresso. <laughs> so I think espresso is one thing that's been sustaining us. There one of go. the very first days that we were here, we had a donor <laughs> donate two espresso machines for our tent. So we're, we've been really relying on that. Right. But no, I, I think, uh, you know, every single day there's things that, that do sustain us. And I think it's the Lord's uh, grace and his timing of when he brings those things. Um, we've seen over 220 patients here and 140 discharges. And every time that we have a patient discharged where they're walking away on their own power, um, we have the entire staff out there and that we're cheering. Um, mm -hmm. And every time that we get to do that, it's a celebration. Um, and I think we're always looking for the opportunities to celebrate. Um, sure. when, I, when I was an RA on uh, Cali Tarana's team, that was one thing we always tried to work in weekly with celebration. And mm -hmm. I think that's just mm -hmm. something that really helps bring perspective. So even today, uh, some of the build team, they built just like a little sun shelter, like just a tarp, like a portico. And one of our Italian team members, they actually held a little ceremony for the tarp where we sang the Italian national anthem and we and we had a bunch of the patients out there singing with us. And so just little things like that, just like keeping keeping the spirits high, um, because sure. you're right, going 12 hours day in, day out without much much uh, time to rest, it can kind of just feel like the days blur altogether. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine um, that they do. And, you know, celebration is, is interesting. Um, if, if you read Richard Foster's work, it's, act, it's actually one of his 12 disciplines and he says that celebration is the foundation to all spiritual disciplines so i'm glad mm. to talk about celebration because uh that is the first step uh of us just giving back to the lord what he's given to us in that situation so that that is great to hear well obviously one of the things that i want to know right off the bat um being in the position i'm in and watching you guys run around mm. the campus for a few years here is as you look back over your time at ccu what do you think kind of prepared you? Uh, how did CCU prepare you for where you're at now, or did it? Um, I would say there were a lot of ways that my faith um, grew during my time at CCU. Um, so that is definitely one. I think another, uh, as a biology major, I took classes like bioethics and things like that, where we dealt with some tough issues. Um, it was a really good class, but it was really hard and it really forced you to think. And so um, we come across bioethical issues here every day. Um, so in that sense, I think it really prepared me. And then I also, I worked as a missions intern for Kelly Nichols for a little while. And um, he has a lot of connections <laughs> around places. And so I've run into some friends of his. All over um, the multiple, world. Multiple yeah. locations. So <laughs> it's right. always fun to meet people and see people that, um, yeah, you never would have thought you would have had a connection with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, you know, I was looking at going and pursuing an accounting route. And after doing an internship while I was at CCU, I had realized that that just wasn't what the Lord had for me. And I came back my that fall semester of my senior year, not really knowing what I was going to do, kind of panicking a little bit. And it was actually through EMS that I had an opportunity to get an interview with Samaritan's Purse. And that's what opened up the right. door for me to do the internship, which has led into these other opportunities. So, yeah, I, I, I give a lot of thanks to EMS for opening up that door. Um, that, that's part of why I'm here. I think what mm -hmm. Emily talked about with CCU to the World, I think that played a really big role in just, I guess, affirming my sense of calling for this type of work, um, right. calling to the nations. Um, I remember my very first CCU trip, I went to Uganda, and while I was there, I actually had malaria. And I remember I, while I was sick, Erica Green, can't she doesn't work there anymore, but she had come and spoken to me and said, hey, I've got Jim McCormick on the line. He, he's asking if you want to get airlifted out of there. And, you know, I, I was okay. Wow. I, I, I didn't need that to happen. But I think what it showed me was God, God showed me that even in the midst of really mm -hmm. hard situations, really scary situations, that he's with me, that he, he sustains me, um, that when, when he calls mm -hmm. us somewhere, that he does protect us. And I think having been through something like that, it really, I guess, uh, it just comforted any fears that I might have responding here. 
um, while we were flying over, like I'll, I'll admit that it was going through my mind. What happens if I get sick with, with coronavirus? What happens if, if our team is, is mm -hmm. affected by this? And just being able to think back to that time when I had malaria on a trip with CCU and remembering just how the Lord had sustained me through that. It just mm -hmm. comforted a lot of those fears. And then I think just how, how I was prepared relationally. Um, I, I just think so highly of the Res Life staff that's there. I spent three years with Res Life um, and just my time with Neil and with Callie and others there, um, just really, you know, building my capacity for um, just connecting with people, with, with empathizing with people. I think that's played a big role in my ability to connect with patients and translators here. Um, and yeah, I think one other thing is just Callie, she's always talking about self-care and I think just going back to the, how do you sustain your time here when you've got 12 hour days and there's no days off, it's, it's finding how can I maintain self-care physically, emotionally, spiritually, even in the midst of that. And I think that my time with Res Life really uh, prepared me for that. Hmm. Well, Matthew and Emily, we're going to have to wrap things up in a, in a minute or two here. Uh, any words you'd like to share with the CCU community? So watching this will be faculty, staff, um, possibly some current students, uh, but uh, mostly faculty and staff. So anything you wanna communicate? Yeah, I've got something. Um, one of the things that I've asked people to be praying for a lot is the physical health and protection for our team. And I, just to give a, a, a praise to that, our, our team is healthy and mm -hmm. We have 68 beds here to treat patients, but we also have an additional staff award that's set off to the side in case any of our staff were to get sick. We've been here for over three weeks now, and even having over 70 staff come through here treating patients day and night, we still have no, no staff who've been sick. And I, I think that's nothing short of a miracle. You, you're hearing all the stories of medical care, uh, medical um, healthcare workers around the world who are, are getting sick from this because of how contagious sure. it is. And every single morning, we, we start our day with devotions. We, we, we pray for that protection from the Lord. And when we come in in the morning and we see that that tent is still empty, uh, that there's no staff that are in there, it's just a reminder of God's hand of protection over us. So I just want to thank you for, for everybody there who has been praying. I've, I've gotten emails from Jim and, and Neil and Callie, as, as I know that they're all praying. And I know that that's, it's been spread around CCU, um, just people praying over us. And it's it's working. I, I see God responding to those prayers and I see the situation in Italy getting better. So thank you so much for those prayers. And I ask that you just continue to be praying for that. And also just that we would have continued opportunities to minister to the patients, to translators, because I just see such a, such a softness of hearts and, and we're, we're seeing people come to Christ uh, every, every few days, which is so cool. That's wonderful. Emily, Emily you want to add anything? Um, I think that's great. Um, I would also just say God is working and he's moving. Um, he prepared the way for us before we got here. And I know um, cases may rise in the U.S. and continue to rise, but he has already prepared a way um, for care there. Samaritan's Purse is there. Other people are there. And so um, just encouragement for people in the U.S. who are either already hit or might get hit. Um, God is still there. He's still working. Um, he is preparing a way, and so don't lose, don't lose heart in that. Mm. Well, we're grateful for you taking the time. I'm going to ask Jim to pray for you in a minute, but uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of CCU, we're proud of you. Uh, we're thankful for you, your service there uh, because um, our hearts go out to all those who are on the front lines. You know, we have nur nurses who are graduates uh, who are in the hot seat. We have people uh, in a lot of different capacities, but you are with Samaritan's Purse in a very critical place. So, so may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you as you serve others in the name of Jesus. Jim? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, guys, I wanted to, you know, the, I don't know if you knew, it was the year of evangelism here at CCU. And um, this year, and the, and the Lord gave me a verse early this year I want to pass on to you from Luke 12:35. And it says, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. And I just get a vision of you guys being dressed every day, ready for service, and keeping your lamps burning, the, those things that the Lord is doing in your life, you know, burning and visible um, as you go. So I just hope that the Lord strengthens you and guides you 
uh, during this time. And, and let me pray for you over there. Lord, we just thank you for uh, Emily and for Matthew as they are dressed every day, ready for service, ready to serve you, ready to move down the path that you have set for them. You tell us in Psalms that you have established the work of our hands and you have established the work of, of Emily and Matthew's hands there in Italy. And Lord, you're using it in a mighty way. I ask that you be with their energy, their attitude, that you would be with their sustenance as they, as they go, that their service would be uh, something that moved the effort forward uh, there in Italy. I ask you to be with Samaritan's Purse as well and Franklin as they meet the needs uh, of the world during this time. Lord, you have put them right into a situation right now. You have them right where you want them. And Lord, uh, they are ready to serve you and are serving you in many places around the world. Lord, as we uh, look at the path ahead, just ask that you would be with Emily and Matthew's health, uh, that you would be with uh, their, uh, just their work every day. And that, Lord, that you would just give them a sense that, that you are in everything that they are doing, no matter how small, no matter how big, uh, but you were right there with them. I just ask that you would be especially present with them during this time. That you would bring folks like us around them to support them, to encourage them, and to pray for them, and they would feel that, Lord. So, Lord, we just give you all the glory, honor, and power you deserve today. And, Lord, we just thank you for the blessings that you give us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you both. Guys, great to thank see you. you. Good to see you. All right. Bye-bye.